Hello, I'm Kenny Eves, and this is Hold to Hope. We are in the middle of a two-part series called What's in a Name Anyway? And this is our last part. This is part two. Our scripture is found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 25. And so, we'll turn there and we'll read that in just a moment, but we had a saying as kids, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names may, will never hurt me. And we used to sing that when, when other kids would tease us or call us names, and, and our retaliation was to say sticks and bones break, may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Hurt me. Uh, the truth is, though, that names do hurt Names do cause pain because names are very important. Be names can shape our lives, shape our destiny. It, it can exalt us or it, it can tear us down. The names that, that we carry. And um, the ancients, the ancients um, knew that. And names were very highly important to, to the ancients back in that antiquity. Because names told of events or prophesied the destiny of children. For, for instance, in Genesis chapter 35, verse 18, Rachel was given birth to, to her youngest son. And she had complications. She, she do her childbirth. And the scripture says, says this, and I quote, And as her soul was departed, for she was dying, she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. End of quote. Benoni apparently could mean son of my sorrows, but Benjamin means son of my right hand. Benjamin, of course, is Jacob's youngest son, Israel's youngest son, and Joseph's full brother. Let us look at one more scripture showing the belief in calling upon the name, the name. As I said earlier, the ancients knew the power of the name, the name of God. Genesis chapter 13, verse 4. To the place where he had made an altar at, at, the, at first. And there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. See, Abraham went back to Bethel. Bethel meaning the house of God. And he called upon the name of God. But now, I want us to consider the most powerful name that's ever given to man. The only name by which we can be saved. The only name by which we are healed, delivered, and restored. I'm talking about the name of Jesus the Messiah, the very Son of the living God. His name is the name above all names. And that is the name that we are most interested in because by it, the early church fathers and early believers wrought powerful signs and wonderful miracles and many glorious healings, even to raise the dead through that name. And our scripture, as we said earlier, is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 25. Uh, if you have your Bible, read along with me. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. And I know this fit the scripture is normally associated with Christmas, but today we want to look at it from the aspect of that name. Because the name Jesus was chosen for him 
because he would save his people from their sins. His name also is Emmanuel, meaning God with us, because God, Jesus is God, and he came to dwell among men. He, he, he came to his people. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made and in him was life and the life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it although he came to his people his people did not recognize him or accept him they were probably looking for maybe a warrior king and Jesus just did not fit that expectation that 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 image that they had in their minds for him. He came to die for the lost. He is the, is a suffering prophet. He came to pay the penalty that, that we might have the power to live, live life to, to, to its fullest, to have victory in our lives. Look with me what happened at the day of Pentecost after the resurrection, 50 days after the resurrection, this is what happened. At Pentecost, after that pour of the Holy Spirit, Peter stood up and quoted the prophet Joel. He told the people that in the last days, God would pour out His Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old man shall dream dreams. And Paul continues quoting the prophet Joel. And this is what uh, Peter quoted in Joel chapter 2 verse 32. This is what he says. Acts 2 21. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it is the belief in the name, the name of Jesus that we call upon the Lord. See, if, if we look and we consider, it's the name that was preached. It's the name that was feared. It's the name that has the power and authority. It's the name that, that has healing in it. It's the name that raised the dead. And it's the name that saves. The name of Jesus. Like I said, it's a name that, that was preached and taught. Look, Acts chapter 14, verse 17, and Acts chapter 18, verse 5 and 28. But in, in order that it may spread no farther among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in that name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Verse, eight, um, verse 5 through 28 says, says, saying, we strictly charge you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. See, what was happening was that the, the disciples, Peter and, and, and John and, uh, and Andrew and all of those disciples, they, they were preaching the name of Jesus, and people were believing, people were, were getting saved, uh, and the whole town, um, the whole city of Jerusalem were, 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 uh, were, were experiencing miracles. They were experiencing signs and wonders all through the power of the name of Jesus. And so the Pharisees brought Peter and John in and, and they commanded them not to teach in that name anymore. Not to teach people about the name of Jesus. Not to tell them the power of his name. Not, not to have them call upon that name to be saved, to be healed, to be delivered from demonic spirits. But they didn't listen because they knew the power of Jesus. They, they wanted people to know uh, that power. And they wanted people to be saved. And there's no other name given unto man by which he can be saved except that name of Jesus. And so they continued preaching and they called them back in and said, Didn't we not strictly warn you not to teach in that name anymore? Because it's that name that they're afraid of, you see. It's that name that delivers. It's that name that... that, that um, when lifted up, that miracles, signs, and wonders begin to happen. And people are saved. 
It was the name that they feared. Look, Acts chapter 5 verse 11. And great fear came upon the whole church, upon all who heard these things. It's the name that has power and authority. Acts chapter 4 verse 7. And when they, they had set them in the midst, they required, By what power and by what name did you do this? It's the name that healed. Acts chapter 3 verse 6 and Acts chapter 4 verse 30. Verse 6 says, But Peter said, I, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. Verse 30. While you stretch out your hand. This is the disciples praying now. Because they, they, they were under attack. Because they, they, the, uh, the chief priests and, and the Pharisees. They did not want them teaching in that name anymore. So, so this is, this is their, their um, believers. The apostles prayer. After being um, persecuted for the name of Jesus. He, they, they, they're asking and said. While you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. It was the name that raised the dead. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 35 says, Women receive back their dead by resurrection. It's the name that saves Acts chapter, Acts chapter 4 verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the most powerful name of Jesus and authority that it carries. There's no other name like it. None under the earth or under the heavens or under the earth or above the earth or above the heavens. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, demons flee, darkness runs away, diseases are healed, marriages are put back together, breaches are repaired, relationships are restored, souls are saved by that most powerful name. So how, tell me, how can Christians sit through a 90 to 110 minutes of actors using the name of Jesus as a cuss word and not be offended? Surely when actors take the name of Jesus and, and, and use it as, as a mere cuss word, does that not offend you? That's the most powerful name. So wonderful, so amazing, and it's relegated to a mere cuss word. And you're okay with that? As Christians, that should be so offensive to us that we refuse to watch anymore. No more. Much less to pay to go and watch this degraded material. Would you sit through an hour and a half or two hours of people degrading you or your spouse or your parents? Yet you see no problem with people degrading the name of your Lord and your Savior. Something is definitely wrong with that picture. You know when Forrest Gump first came out on t television, everybody was talking about it. But I hadn't seen it. I, I, I didn't go. And so it came, came on TV and everyone was saying how good it was. So I started watching this film and not long after it began, they used God's name as a cuss word. That offended me. I, I, I was a brand new Christian. Nobody told me. No, I didn't hear any message like this. But it offended me to think that they would use the name of God as a cuss word. I politely turned it off, walked out of the room. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to hear it. That offends me. So how, how can I sit through a 90 minute movie or 110 minute movie and, and, and they're just blaspheming the name of the Lord Used it as a cuss word, and, and, and I'm laughing and laughing at the jokes and I'm and being entertained. And then I have the audacity to get up on Sunday morning and, 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 and call on the name of Jesus for Him to save me or, or, or to heal me by His name. Maybe that is why we don't see more healings because we give our blessing to other people. 
to take the Lord's name and use it as a mere cuss word. And we even probably do it ourselves, some of us. Think about that for a moment. Let that just sink in just for a moment. Do you give your permission to others to use your God's name as a cuss word? And then come to church Sunday morning, raising your hands and singing, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. But yet, it's a cuss word. Last night, Let's take a look at what Jesus said about his own name. He said, and these signs will accompany those who believe, colon, in my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands, lay, lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18. You know, the majority of translations um, translate this, this word as those who believe, colon, in my name, they will do this, they will do that. Now, I want you to consider something. I want you to remember or at least understand that the New Testament is written in Greek, and the Greek didn't have punctuation. Therefore, that verse, that same word, verse that's translated, believe, colon, in my name, it could very well read this way. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, colon. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues, etc. How about that? Those who believe in my name. It's that name, I'm telling you, that's above all names. It's that name that holds the power. It's that name that, the, that they preached. It's that name that they were warned, do not preach anymore, do not teach anymore in that name. It's the name. You see the difference? It's, it's a belief that Jesus' name is holy. It's above all names. And it goes a little further than, than, than just a mere belief. It's the belief that the name of Jesus is above all things. I want you to look at what Paul explains in his letter to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. Therefore, God has exalted him, Jesus, exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now Paul understood the power of the name of Jesus. And he revered that name. And it yielded great power for him. Even handkerchiefs were placed on Paul's body and then laid on the sick. And they recovered. While we here in the 21st century laugh at jokes and use the name of the Lord Jesus as a cuss word, and we yield no power. And Lord forbid, if another ch church tries to invoke the name of Jesus to bring about healing, or to perform signs and wonders in the name of Jesus, they're blasted and called witchcraft. They're called false prophets, heretics, and apostates. But look at the fruit. If souls are being saved and Jesus is being preached, we should be like Paul and rejoice. But it's more like jealousy, if anything, what I believe. Because Paul was in prison and Paul said that people are preaching the gospel just, just to cause me harm. People are preaching the gospel just for money. People are preaching the gospel to, to, so, so, so that I can be in even more trouble in here in prison. But he said regardless of why they're preaching, at least the name of Jesus is being preached. And souls are being saved. But not these people today. Not today. They don't want the name of Jesus preached. 
They don't want that power to be known. Even in the church, they don't want it to be known. Why? Why? Why not? Because we don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit in these days that we're living in. Acts chapter 2 verse 30 it says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave his disciples the authority to use his name when they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at two uh, pieces of scripture with me. Luke chapter 10 verse 17 through 20 and John chapter 2 verse 23 through 25. First let us look at Luke chapter 10 verse 17 through 20. The 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I, get, I have given you authority to thread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. It's all about the name. It's all about your name. John chapter 2, verse 23 through 25. Now when he was in, in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about, about man. For he himself knew what was in man. It's all the same. It's all about the name and the power that the name held. What I'm saying, or what I'm trying to say is this. That salvation comes through faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross. Signs, wonders, and various miracles and healings comes from a faith in his name and the power and authority that his name has. Remember that apostles couldn't cast out the demons, but they were saved. So it wasn't that they lost faith in Jesus as Lord. No, they still had that faith. Their faith in, in the power of his name was not up to par, is what Jesus told them. The name of Jesus is a very powerful and a very holy name. But it comes at a price. If we cling to that name, if we call upon that name, if we invoke the name of Jesus, we will be persecuted for it. There's, there's coming a time, and indeed I believe that that time has already come, when people will no longer put or put up with sound doctrine, as Paul said, but wishing to have their ears tickled, they will heap abuse upon us, those who hold fast to that name, and promote and exalt those who compromise that name. The name of Jesus. That's who they, they, they will exalt. That's who, who, who they will promote. But us who hold fast, they will persecute. They will heap abuse upon us. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. For us to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's what Paul said. And for us, it's the same thing. No matter what comes, and believe me, tribulation is coming. But no matter what comes, come hell or high waters, they say, we must endure to the end so that we can be saved. So that we will be saved. And we have to tell others about the goodness 
and the power of Jesus and the power of His name so that they too can be saved. So that they too will endure to the end. So they will be saved. So if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, He's waiting. He wants to give you the authority to use His name. He wants, he wants to give you authority to use His name for salvation. For there's no other name given unto man by which He can be saved. He wants to give you authority to use His name to be healed. To, to, to lay hands on others and see them recover. For driving out demonic spirits and evil spirits. Because the spirits are subject to His name. And they must obey His name. So now, no matter what your need is, He will and can fulfill that name. So if you don't know Jesus today as Lord and Savior, you can. All you got to do is to call upon that name. And you'll find forgiveness in that name. Let me just lead you in a quick prayer here. Pray, pray this prayer with me. And if you believe, if you believe it, believe in, in what Jesus did as a sacrifice for us on, on Calvary those 2,000 years ago, Believe that salvation is found in Jesus. You will be healed. You believe in the power of his name. You will be healed. Lord Jesus, I come to you battered, bruised, a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to live a victorious life. Help me to believe in the power and authority of your name. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you, Lord God, that I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you have, if you need healing, the Lord is able to heal. Lord, I pray for, for healing for everyone that's watching today. Touch the part of your body that needs that healing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing into that body. By the power and authority of the name of Jesus, we claim your healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My name is Kenny Yates. This has been Hold to Hope. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine down upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Be blessed.